Is everybody ready for us to begin? There's not a whole lot of audience participation, but a little bit. There is always audience participation at DEF CON. You guys ready for this? Yeah, so this is Satan is on my friends list, attacking social networks. I am uh, Nathan Hamill, uh, senior consultant, idea information security associate professor at UAT. And as a matter of fact, I might have some students here, so I'm on my best behavior. Um, and uh, I have uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, MySpace, and Twitter. If you see accounts for us on any other network, assume they're not us. Thank you. I'm Sean Moyer. I hack for dollars for a company called Fishnet Security at the moment. Um, Multi-purpose windbag, frequent black hat speaker, LinkedIn, Twitter, kind of, sort of, kind of Facebook. Please pay us to come break your web apps. Thank you. And uh, so not only are we in your extended network, but Satan is also in your extended network. And uh, actually, Satan is actually rather elitist and doesn't like people adding him to his friends list. We tried to add, like, many Satans, and no one would have the time of day with us except apparently this Satan who's yeah, 69 years old from we Connecticut. Weren't quite sufficiently evil. It took a little while, and we sent him a couple of requests, and finally... Finally, he gave in. So, so we made Satan uh, give in. Yeah. Brief disclaimer. No animals, bloggers, journalists, or cam whores were harmed during these demonstrations. While actual social net sites and users were involved, all payloads were benign, and it only resulted in wounded pride and possibly high blood pressure. We are not experts and should not be trusted in any way. Always ask your doctor before changing prescriptions or viewing live journal session captures. MySpace contains the most feature complete open social implementation. Many of the issues discussed here are on their platform. The rest of you guys suck too. Seriously, we mean it. Yeah, we just don't want people to get the, you know, the idea that we're only picking on MySpace because that's really not the it, case. It is kind of like beating up on a retarded kid. It's a lot of fun, <laughs> but it's a little too easy. So what is our presentation about? This is our, our little roadmap type thing, and it's out of order. So don't look at the order, look it's at the It's totally in order. What the hell are you talking about? So uh, yeah, this is our obsession with social networks. It's basically a, a series of kind of impromptu threat models and kind of uh, pro bono penetration testing we did over drinks, uh, box wine, uh, hard liquor, whatever we could get a hold of. Um, also seeing how many accounts we could get deleted very quickly. Um, and that uh, usually, happens. Usually actually very slowly. Yeah, so say. if you care about your MySpace Facebook account, don't do any of the things that you see us do here because you won't have it very yes. long. Okay, so this is like a really hard thing. We argued about this for like three or four months. Um, like, are these disclosure worthy? Are they not disclosure worthy? Well, I mean, they can get you massively owned, but they're documented in the APIs. Yeah, if you document your vulnerabilities, then we kind of think that we yeah, don't have to tell know you about them. Yeah, you should already know. So, uh, so yeah, we kind of we argued about different like words for that. So we're like, you know, vulnerability and feature. Like uh, Brendan O'Connor said, call it a vulture. Um, so we said, yeah, feature abilities. Uh, these are all, you know, a lot of these things are things they put there on purpose. Yeah, so social networks is a attack platform. You know, obviously millions of users. Um, you know, I think something like seven or eight million on. Uh, uh, like Facebook and a couple of the other ones. Um, the uh, Alexa top 20 websites were like the highest traffic websites out there, like something like five of those are social networks. So, you know, so there's a lot of users, a lot of targets. Um, you know, the business model is really about, guess what? Not actually, you know, helping you find, you know, your old high school girlfriend, but uh, allowing users to create all this content and all these groups and all these things so that they can sell marketing and direct things towards you. So yeah. you're, you're volunteering to be, create your own focus group of your friends, right? So and If you think about it, social networks are created by content that's really not theirs. They're counting on their user community to create this content and put it on there. So most of their content isn't created by them or kind of controlled by them, and you'll see that coming up. Yeah, and so sort of, you know, vuln mashups, you know, it, there's a lot of social components to a lot of these things. There's also a lot of technical components. Um, one of the big things about social networks is they're really kind of built on trust. It's very much this environment of everybody joining hands and singing Kumbaya. So, you know, that, that makes it, you know, pretty interesting to look at. Yeah, and then, you know, uh, various kind of really kind of retarded demos and silliness. And, and this is, this makes no sense until you see the slides. So. Yeah, things that we wish we could unsee. Um, we're also going to talk about some particular things with the apps for the part of these social networks. So attacking with clients, attacking apps with apps, and uh, using a social net as a light, lightweight botnet. Also known as malware as a service. <laughs> so, and, yeah. of course, uh, 
some uh, cross-site request forgeries and actually some things that really aren't cross-site request forgeries. They're actually same-site request forgeries, <laughs> which actually makes them really just request forgeries. Yeah, because we know – yeah, so they're IRF, they're you know, IRF. as opposed to CSER. So, like, you, you know, we already know you're logged into the site. We're using the site to get you to do other things, so – yeah. And <laughs> this is pretty much the, the moral of the story. External content equals bad, and we will discuss that here very More detail shortly. Soon. Um, <laughs> this is uh, Chris Bissell from the MySpace team, and um, we just want him to know that uh, we don't want him to hate us too bad. Um, his videos were very informative and helped out a lot when constructing a lot of these attacks. Thank so you, Chris. We, we appreciate it. Okay, now down to the external... Content equals fucks are – wow, that's dark. Um, I think it's awesome. <laughs> so if you, if you link to things off-site, um, you're actually setting yourself up for failure. And uh, a few of the things we went through is uh, using an image tag to perform cross-site request forgeries. Um, you know, you can do click fraud, uh, social net as a botnet, um, you know, and, and it's not just MySpace, even though those are our demos. Um, there's a lot of other sites that are vulnerable to this, too. Uh, you know, MySpace, High Five, LiveJournal. Many of these sites allow you to link yeah. to content off-site, even if it's just an image. Yeah, well, pretty much anybody that gives you the ability to, to do something off-site, you know, on their site, we can fuck around with your request, mangle it, and then send it back, and essentially they have no control over what's going on. Oh, and, uh, yeah, just so you, in case you didn't know, according to the Associated Press, we invented cross-site request forgery. You're welcome. That just came out yesterday. Yeah, we thought that was great. They, the, they've discovered a novel way to insert an image tag. You know, um, well, yeah, this is all images. this is all really old, really obvious stuff, which is why it's so you know appalling that it still works. You know. uh, and of course, this is our same site request forgery things like this. Converting requests. Uh, if you take a particular post request and convert it to a get, um, sometimes you find that certain things aren't uh, in. They aren't enforced the same way. So you have filters, uh, view state Mac. Sometimes it works for a post and doesn't work for a get, which can be very bad. Um, yeah, and the, and the reason that that's kind of interesting is a lot of kind of Ajaxy kind of functified stuff does a lot of post stuff, and uh, it's a lot easier to forge gets. Um, so, you know, what we found is there's a lot of stuff there where that actually works. Yeah, so. and you don't need an XML HTTP request uh, to do uh, sort of request forgeries. So. Now, uh, I want you to meet a few friends. This is Alice, Bob, and Eva. And we have a little demo to show you. Now, Al, or, uh, Eva has Bob as a friend, but she wants to get some more friends. So what she does is she looks at, she looks at, she looks at, she, look, <laughs> she looks at Bob, who has two friends, which is her and Alice. If we could get that fixed, that would be great. <laughs> So she wants Alice as a friend. So she goes to Bob's profile and does this typical MySpace social networky type thing, and she wants to leave a comment. So she clicks on. Sorry, I was so painfully slow when recording this. <laughs> so in this comment, she basically says thanks for the ad and inserts an image tag. That image tag links to offsite content, which is one by one pixel. And so, they have some really elite 1980s antivirus filtering technology that checks for the .jpg extension. So we were very impressed with that. And the ultra yeah. secure CAPTCHA, which is protecting you from all. CAPTCHA makes you safe. And now the comment is posted. Of course, you can't see the image, uh, which is actually failing. So you don't get the nice little red X. So when Alice visits Bob's profile, eventually. <laughs> this was done very slowly because it's on a Mac, sorry. <laughs> it's I thought that, it was because we really were It's all that really drunk. cool core image like. So as you can see like, on here, the watch, you'll see for yourself. She has a new friend request. Ta-da, the aristocrats. Basically, Alice made a request, friend request to Eva, but really didn't. So now she has Alice and Bob as a friend. I know, it doesn't look earth shattering, does it? You want more friends? That sucked. So you laugh at that. 
this really gets bad when you start talking about things like innocuous functions. So there are certain things that are painfully obvious to developers or anybody protecting applications. Um, you know, account management, uh, you know, reading messages, deleting messages. These things are all considered privileged functions, things that should be protected. Um, what people don't really think about uh, are things that don't appear valuable, like logging out or blocking communication or friend ads, apparently, and lots of other things. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, one of the points of that is, Basically, all of the CSERF stuff, there's really only one defense against CSERF right now, and that's just CSERF tokens. And CSERF tokens are not like something like a session ID where it's, you know, 128, 256 bits, something like that. A lot of these are like 8, 10 bits. Uh, in one case, uh, one of the sites actually uses the session ID as the CSERF token, but then they also include that in URL. So you get a refer, and then you have the CSERF token. Yeah, it's and, setting you refer. Yeah, and so, you know, pretty much once you're past CSERF token, it's kind of game over for everybody. So let's look at attacking an innocuous function on MySpace. So we go back to the typical Eva, Alice, Bob scenario. But uh, Eva's pretty moody, and uh, she doesn't like Bob anymore, and she really wants to get back at him. So she goes to Bob's profile and wants to leave another comment. Uh, same type of thing. Linking to an offsite image, which is actually some Python code, by the way. I just thought I'd pimp Python a little bit. And she's going to leave him, uh, you're a douche, and post that comment. And of course, once again, ultra secure CAPTCHA. You are safe because of CAPTCHA. Was I fat fingering that? What is that? I don't know. We were drinking. So now that comment is now posted on Bob's profile. So when Bob goes to his profile, he is notified immediately that he has new comments. So he goes to view the comment and sees the comment. It says, you're a douche. So being mad, he wants to send Eva a message. You're a whore. <laughs> and is logged out. And what this will do is log Bob out every time that he views that or tries to change it, and also log everybody out that views Bob's profile. I totally, I totally, <laughs> yes, I totally missed that image. That was outstanding. Can we play oh, a video? Oh, back? yeah, look at that. Live the dream, start singing now. I love MySpace ads, as you'll see. So. There, you don't just have to use an image tag to do this. If there are certain other methods that allow you to go and get this off-site get, like you could use an image tag, you could use meta refresh or iframe source. Now, some of these are painfully obvious, and social networks do protect against them. I think all of these are painful. I think all of these are pretty painfully obvious, but most of them still work, which is kind of frightening. Uh, one of the other things with that is if you look at uh, there's been a lot of malware propagation that's been using things like uh, CSS on Blogger and a, a lot of other sites that let you do your own CSS. So like MySpace will let you link to, you know, buttloads of images and, uh, you know, all this external content because you want to have like the dancing butterflies and all that on your, on your page because it makes you cool. Um, actually, something really awesome that somebody told me last night is that Jason Scott is personally responsible for goat seeing uh, 235,000 people yesterday. <laughs> so... <laughs> Apparently, the story goes that, and I'm sure he'll tell you a much longer version of it. Um, apparently, the story goes that uh, somebody created a MySpace skin, you know, or whatever, and they linked to some content on textfiles.com for it, and he mailed them, and it's like, please stop. And they're like, ha, 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 it's the internet, you can't make us, or whatever. So he just wrote a 302 that bounced them to Goatsy. So 235,000 people on MySpace just, you know, <laughs> went to their homepage. <laughs> And what's really cool about that, though, which is what I said, I'm like, I wish we would have talked to you first, because you can do far worse than that. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, we could have logged all of them out permanently every time they logged into their page. That CSS that included that image would have logged them out and anyone else that viewed their profile. Um, you know, obviously, you could also have turned them essentially into your own, you know, kind of personal botnet, bounced all of those requests to, you know, different hosts that you want to target, and you have 235 different, or 235,000 different unique IPs that are at your disposal. You know, so I mean that's yeah. Basically, external content equals fail. You know. 
Apparently microphone equals fail too as well. Um, and it's not just logging people out. Um, something that would be a lot harder to detect doing the same thing would be to block communication. So you could actually block people's communication as they visit your profile and they'll never be able to send you a message and you'll never know what's going on. So that kind of makes it a little interesting as well. So let's talk about some logic attacks on social nets. Now, logic attacks aren't really that straightforward. So it's not like you can find a, a Vuln scanner that's like testing for you know particular logic attacks. Um, it's extremely difficult to identify, and you, you're going to love our. Uh... So let's talk about Adult Friend Finder, everybody's favorite social network. And I see some people are looking very scared right now, and that is very funny. Yeah. So. Um... We kind of we argued about this for a while, and it's actually kind of hard to define now. Is you know we're talking about looking at social networks, and so you know what's a social network and what's not. I mean, like Blogger has like kind of friends list your friends, your blog is friends with my blog, blah blah blah. LiveJournal has some components like that, and so we we kind of arrived at you know in arguing about that that we decided that Adult Friend Finder was actually a social network. When the only difference is that when you friend somebody, you fuck them. <laughs> you know, it's pretty much. It's kind of like MySpace. <laughs> We're just giving you a hard time. So this is a logic flaw in Adult Friend Finder that allows you to do a certain sort of privilege escalation to view pay for content. Now, here is a standard profile, and this member is online now. Uh, as another standard member, you should not be able to view standard member content. Now, I realize it, it looks like I know way too much about this, but I swear it was for research only. And... Uh, <laughs> I do not have a bunch of profiles out there in various stages of undress. His current mood is naughty. That's my favorite part. Well, that's not mine. That's somebody else's, but uh, they were in the same geographical area. So might as well troll a little bit while you're doing research. <laughs> and uh, we are actually saving you from having to see this. Um, there's, uh, <laughs> you can come up afterwards and we'll give you the actual screenshots. We have a bunch of them if you really want to. You can, we can also help you find your profile if you'd like. This basically shows a, a sort of escalation in privilege because you're only supposed to view one webcam at a time when it's, as a standard member. Um, and I realize it looks like I still know way too much about this, but obviously there's four going at the same time. And I could not wait to get the screenshot and then turn this off. Um, so Nathan mailed me about this one, and he's like, dude, <laughs> I just popped an old friend finder. <laughs> and uh, I didn't hear back of him for a couple of days. I was setting up some new profiles, man, in Las Vegas. Oh, okay, so this is mine, which is out-fucking-standing because we have one microphone. Thanks you, thank you so much, A.B., guys. So... Um, you know, one of the one of the big things about about all of this is that you know we really think about social networking attacks as being just by definition kind of social engineering. It's all kind of about blended threats, and so it's all kind of always tied together. It's hard to talk about one or the other, um, and that's you know that's kind of why it was so fun. A lot of the things that we did either looked at you know the technical components or they looked at the social. Um, you know, I think it's kind of obvious that when you combine the two together, it's you know pretty ugly pretty fast. Uh, interesting quote off of thank you. Uh, interesting quote off of. Uh, uh, actually Dan Kaminsky's Twitter from like three, four months ago, he said something about, why do people think I have to weaponize the obvious? What's wrong with them? And I'm like, hmm, I wonder what that means. Um, so yeah, it's just the combination of these two together. So with that, you know, one of the things that we think about, obviously everybody always talks about like, oh, we can find you on Facebook and tie that to your MySpace and then you're, you know, your adult friend finder and you know, whatever else you have. Um, you know, we kind of think that all the crap that people say about, you know, your identity can be stolen on a social network is kind of retarded. Um, if you share your information on a social net, assume it is public, you know, I kind of say to that like a footnote, you like see Paris Hilton repeated ponage, right? I mean, it's, you know, it's pretty obvious. I mean, not obvious. only that, but I mean, geez, you're putting it on the internet and of course, you <laughs> know, nobody can ever, you know, that's really safe, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> I have no comment. Uh, so yeah, and it actually something that was kind of terrifying to us is that Facebook takes credit cards now, which we thought was kind of strange, but apparently they're starting to create some kind of like stores and sell things. So yeah, if you give your credit card number to Facebook, you deserve to fail. You know? um, <laughs> um, when you talk to your coworkers and you say, hey, you know, uh, we're working on this uh, talk for Black Hat and DEF CON and uh, we're doing it on social networks. Uh, do you have a MySpace account? 
Why, yes, I do. You should probably remove pictures like this. And what's really funny about this picture is uh, the caption, which you can't read, and it says, does this dress make me look fat? Yeah. Now, although, I'm hoping that this is Halloween and not Friday night. Yeah, although actually, like, we were talking to some of us earlier, and they're like, uh, we, there's a couple other things like this where we, like, from, like, somebody's LinkedIn profile, like, identified, like, something bondage-related or whatever, and it's like, um, somebody said to us, like, do you think people at DEF CON really care about, you know, cross-dressing and bondage? So, you know, it's maybe not that revolutionary. <laughs> but, it's just funny. Yeah, it's pretty funny, actually. So, yeah, so one of the things that, um, that I spent a little time doing was kind of some social engineering exercises on social networks. Um, it was just something that, that, you know, occurred to me and other people have talked about it in the past and I just wanted to kind of see, you know, how effective it was. So, um, you know, my deal is that on business social networking sites especially, there's a lot of return on investment for something, you know, that's a targeted attack. It's very little effort to do, you know, there's no real validation of any kind that you work for company X or Y or whatever. So, you know, if you were going to target like an IBM or the DOD or the NSA or you know whatever you know you set yourself up a profile that says you're like an intern there or whatever and you friend all these people and see how many connections you can get well guess what from that you have email addresses you have the ability to send the messages and all these other things and guess what they're typically accessing these sites you know from their desktop inside the company right so if you know it's like something like 5k to write you know a piece of you know custom malware you know to hit company x or y and like i actually talked to somebody just a little while ago about an incident that was a, a very focused spear phishing attack that was like specifically like four C-level people in a company, right? So this is a great way to kind of get inside somewhere. So yeah, is it typically just about building some kind of plausible profile, public sources, getting a respectable number of connections to where it looks like a valid profile? Um, and you know, and sort of, and then what? You know, like I said, in our case, we really just wanted to demonstrate how trivial it was to build those connections. I think it's pretty obvious what you would then sort of the next step would be for that. So, um, what we did was we sent this email out to a whole bunch of high-profile security people who didn't have any footprint on social networks, and most of them said hell no. Um, we asked, uh, actually. Uh, I'll tell this story here, this is kind of cool, was uh, we actually asked Bruce Schneier, Phil Zimmerman, um, and uh, Marcus, and a couple other people I won't name because they're coming soon. Um, and uh, actually, Schneier was kind of a douche about it. Um, but Phil was, Zimmerman You and that word douche lately. I really wanted the chance to call Schneier a douche at DEFCON. <laughs> um, so he, he actually told us not only was it a bad idea um, you know, for him personally, but that it wouldn't work. You know, so it was our entire thesis was wrong, you know. Uh, but uh, Phil was really kind of funny because he said, you know, and people really think, you know, like my whole kind of how people hire me to continue to do things, you know, it's like I kind of make, you know, I'm an independent consultant and things. And he's like, you know, th they really kind of think Phil Zimmerman is a nice guy. And I'm, I'm pretty sure people are going to really think I'm an asshole now. And I'm like, I think really they'll just think I'm an asshole, but, you know, we can respect that. Uh, Marcus had no problem with that. Um, so, you know, his deal was all these people keep sending me all these things on social networks and, the, and, you know, I keep telling them how retarded this is and what a bad idea it is and nobody will listen. So, you know, go for it. Fire at will. And he's like, do you want to know my bio? Do you want my resume? I'm like, no, no, no. Let us figure it out. You know, we'll see what we can do. So over the course of a couple hours, what we did was uh, basically every time a company hires Marcus Random, they put out a press release. You know, so we built his resume, right? You know, it's like he started this date. You know, Random joins Tenable. Random joins NFR, you know. Um, took us a couple of hours. Put that together, found a uh, you know press release photo from a conference, and took his bio off of his own website. But then you know kind of the next step was how do we kind of create enough connections to make it look kind of legitimate? By the way, there are five Kevin Mitnicks on LinkedIn, <laughs> just related to that. And what's really kind of bizarre is that most of my connections are like connections with one of them, but it's not really clear which one. So. <laughs> If if anybody knows which one is actually Kevin, you know, maybe he just forgot his password. He like might have forgot times. his password. We don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, and actually, for what it's worth, I have I've heard from a number of people that like when that happens, it's really hard to get your profile like taken off later. Um, you know, they're not very responsive to getting some help. So anyway, so we needed to get like kind of quick legitimacy, and so you know, on MySpace, these kind of people get called kind of friend whores. On LinkedIn, I kind of call them link whores. Uh, so these are basically people who on LinkedIn think it's really cool to have lots of connections for no reason I can really discern. And um, in this particular search is 835 people identified on LinkedIn who are people who 
it will accept friend requests from anyone who are also CISSPs and also work in the security industry. Uh, there's another one that I, do, that I don't show here that's like there's 500 of those that also work in the defense industry, which I thought was pretty damn cool. Um, so we kind of, what we did was we just went through a list like that and we sent them all friend requests as Marcus. And these are CISSPs, right? So they, they should know. Um, and uh, what happened- That was actually a joke. Is it it was a joke. It laugh. was really kind of died. Um, so what happened was, you know, we ended up with about 40 or 50 connections as Marcus um, it, over the course of, I think, like four or five hours. Um, from that, what we then started doing is joining all the LinkedIn networking groups. So we made Marcus a member of the security thought leaders, you know, group. And the Black Hat group, and I actually have to give um, DT kind of props on this. We joined the DEF CON group too, I think. But um, for the Black Hat group, there's another group for Black Hat speakers. And he mailed me and he's like, should I let you join that? And uh, I guess apparently they do normally validate somehow in, you know, to make you a member of that. But yeah, he joined the CSO group and the ISA group and the ISACA group and all these other things. And then from that, we started kind of targeting people a little bit to just, like I said, just to make a connection with them. Um, so the end result was uh, we got about 50 odd connections, like say, um, in about 24 hours. Uh, CSO of a Fortune, actually a Fortune 10 company. Um, I, going to not say which one, um, a number of people from the defense industry, a bunch of old coworkers and things of Marcus's who would mail us and say like, hey, man, I'm so glad you're on here. Like, give me a call. Here's my phone number. Here's my new email address. I've got something I want to talk to you about. Um, ISSA people. Um, there was one guy, which I thought was really cool. He like accepted our request and he's like, thanks, Marcus. Love your product. I, I use it all the time for security testing. I'm an independent consultant. And Marcus, you know, us as Marcus replied back, like, thanks a lot. Make sure you register, you know, the, the uh, official version. Um, you know, <laughs> they just changed the licensing. So uh, my personal favorite, though, is uh, the one down below. Um, he got this friend request and it says, I don't know if you can see it, but it says, whoa, you're on here now. Can I be in your network? And uh, it says they're former classmates at, at college. And so I said, well, man, this must be like an old girlfriend or something. So I mailed it to Marcus. And he said, no, that's my sister. <laughs> you know, and by the way, if you are, were on his connection list, his email address was marcus.ranum at gmail.com. So, and anybody who knows, like, of Marcus, like, he's had the same email address for, like, 20 years, which is, like, mjr at random.com, and that's the only email address he even has, like, on his page, and I'm presumably told his sister at some point, like, if you see anything other than that, that's not me. So, yeah, so after that, <laughs> we went through another exercise. We, we, we actually didn't have permission for this, but I have a good explanation <laughs> uh, that I'm, I'm not going to go into. Uh, so... Uh, what we what we did was there's a lot of security people now that are like starting to get on Twitter, you know, and I so, wonder who those are. I wonder who those are. And there's um there's a, a lot of uh, uh, the uh, security blogosphere, the uh, thought leaders, and uh, and all these people that are all on there. And uh, so what I did was a, a same kind of deal, and it was actually far more trivial. I just like found a picture of Gotti, um, linked to his blog, and then what I did was I started uh, following FunSec, like his listserv, and every time like a new post came on there, I just tweeted it. You know, it said, like, hey, check this out. This is really cool. And then um, actually started to kind of develop the Gotti voice. There's, there's one here that's uh, real player stack overflow from ZDI. Anyone knows this is different than Heatbug? You know, and like a URL to it. Um, and like kept kind of talking about that. And what happened was people were talking a lot about the DNS phone. And there was a journalist who said, you know, is anybody seeing this exploited in the wild? And so Gotti replied and said, it's not something I can talk to yet, but yes, it's there. And, you know, said, you know, it's out there and it's going on. So this guy started sending us messages like, can you talk about this? You know, can you do an interview? And, um, you know, we said, well, you know, the best way to catch us, you know, talk to me is on Twitter. I'm always on here. So just send me messages. <laughs> and, uh, and so, um, actually, uh, uh, I have to, I have to give props. HD Moore outed us. Um, he was actually on Gaddy's uh, friends list on here as well. Um, but Gaddy posted, and he's like, look, someone's impersonating me again, you know, and uh, posted on his listserv and then on his blog. And then for a while there, I kept going. And I'm like, no, no, you know, I'm actually Gaddy and so on. Um, but uh, 
he, this guy was about, we had about an hour where we were just about to, you know, become an anonymous source in a large, you know, security rag, you know, and I don't know if it would have ever made it, but our theory was what we were going to do. Um, we thought it, it sounded much more illegal, like if we actually said we were Gotti in the interview. So we said, you know, we'll go off the record. And we were going to insert this meme that, like, all the DNS cash point is going to tax are sourced out of Latvia. It's all Latvia, you know. <laughs> and so we're like, you know, when you see that everywhere, like, we did that. Um, you know, but we, yeah, we eventually outed ourselves. And the end result of that is that the actual Gotti is now on Twitter. And for that, we're terribly sorry. <laughs> okay, let's talk about some MySpace apps. So MySpace apps, uh, anybody familiar? It's uh, open social, and it combines uh, these convenient APIs, 100% arbitrary code, uh, write once, own anywhere. Yeah, that was kind of the, the intent. I mean, open social is, is, was it created as a, essentially a competitor for Facebook apps because Facebook was kind of get, getting ahead of everybody with it. And it's a, it's a loose like conglomerate of all the major social networking sites. Um, that have kind of come up with the standard that interoperates. And so, yeah, essentially you could create one open social app and it should, in theory anyway, run everywhere. Um, MySpace, and we want to point this out, like I said, they were just the first to really do, other than like Plaxo, which nobody cares about, uh, they were the first to kind of go live with this. Yeah, and, and that's one of the reasons we chose this is because there has been people looking at the Facebook type apps and there's been people who have written kind of like bad Facebook apps, other than just the developers who write bad Facebook apps to begin with. Um, but open social is kind of a, a neat thing because there are a lot of different social nets that are implementing it. So if you have a, p a particular piece of malicious code, you can go ahead and propagate that through every social net mm -hmm. that, it, as long as you have developer access, of course, which we'll get into that yeah, in a we'll few minutes. Um, apparently on Facebook, you can just add the developer app and the only thing you need to do to publish your application to the world is have five friends. Don't really know well, so what that's we, all about. Yeah, we made five friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they all friended each other, and okay, you know, there we and, go. And uh, for, for MySpace, you had to go through the development process. So you had to, like, submit this form, and basically it asked you your name and your email address and the company you work for, and then it said, why do you want to become a MySpace developer? So, and I don't remember the exact wording that I put on the thing, but I said, you know, if they would have looked at my blog, they would have said, hey, we're speaking at Black Hat, we're speaking at DEF CON, social networking vulnerability, you know, all this kind of stuff. So obviously they didn't go there. Um, what, was but, your, what was your developer app that you proposed? Uh, well, I said I was working on a, an encryption application for sending messages based on the uh, unbreakable ROT13 encryption scheme. So, <laughs> And somebody, yeah, somebody at MySpace HQ went, click approve, click approve, click approve. Yeah. And, and some interesting things about this too, with, with many social networking apps, is it's centrally managed, basically. Your code is in the center, and everybody you know, automatically gets the most up-to-date version of your code. So if you were going to launch some huge attack, what you'd do is attach to some meme, get a lot of people installing your app, and then at one point you flip a switch, and now you have the malicious code going yeah. out to all these people. So even if it was detected at some point, um, there's a lot of damage you can do in a very short amount of time with these applications. And you can kind of make your own personal little botnet. So the social networks, how they kind of handle this is they're counting on the domain security of the browser. So there's a lot of, you know, same origin type things. So when you, when you run like MySpace apps, for instance, it comes from api.msappspace.com. So they, they typically, they put the disclaimer on there and they make it sound like, you know, we didn't write these apps, which is perfectly reasonable. And they said, we're not really kind of publishing these apps. Yeah, and if, but you, if, they you read, are. if you read the EULA, you know, you're absolving them of kind of any accountability for anything that happens. And like kind of our you know, point is the really, the only thing that they're really getting out of running these in a separate domain is just that, you know, unless, you know, sort of unless you can hop over same origin, you can't hit them, right? Because that's really the intent. They really need to continue to sell ads and deliver service. But there's nothing you know, in the obviously in the process or the ability to, to push out an app or anything else that keeps that keeps their users protected. You're just they're protecting themselves from their own apps essentially. Yeah. They're not they're not protecting their users from their own information, which is kind of funny on a social net. Yeah. And they're not protecting their user environment from malicious apps. And also, oddly enough, they're not protecting apps from other apps. <laughs> yeah, we'll get as we'll see. Yeah. So what about same origin? We kind of already went all that went over all that, but. 
when you have access to the API, there's like some nice documentation around that. It says the browser security model won't allow you to request data from another domain. So here, here's these helper functions that allow you to do just that. So you can construct you. any get and any post to any site. Now, the, the one thing I will say about that with, with regard to cross-site request forgery and stuff like that is it doesn't execute from the client machine. It's actually a server on the MySpace network yeah, we'll, that will go out and get yeah, that, we'll and that. that's coming up. So it depends on your goal. I mean, sometimes you just don't care about same origin. If your goal is to, you know, put some malware on a client, then you really don't care what, where it comes from. Why do, why do I need elite zero-day XSS when I can just pop the client itself and get your MySpace password that way or whatever it is, right? I mean, we have a, if we have an arbitrary iframe that we can execute any code from, we've got lots of other ways to get your credentials. You know, it, it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to really care if we can hop across. But like I said, what it does do a great job of is protecting them, you know, from, from any of these things. And kind of sitting down and thinking about this, it's, there's a lot of very smart people looking at trying to get JavaScript to execute in the context of these social networks. So when you sit down and think, I hate this microphone. When you sit down and think about it, why spend you know hours, days, months trying to get JavaScript to execute when you could just ask for permission and they let you execute anything <laughs> yeah. you want to? So this doesn't look, well, that's my dumb face, but this doesn't really show too much. And the funny thing is there's an application added to my page called C Surfer. Hmm, I wonder what that does. But C Surfer is reading a token, or it's reading a cookie from another app called Pants Status. Pants, um, pants Status down for maintenance. Yeah, down for maintenance. So that doesn't look like too earth shattering, and it's really not. But it just shows that apps can call other app built-ins. It can request data. And um, coming up here pretty soon, we'll show you can actually take the entire code from somebody else's self-contained app, copy and paste it into your app, and call the same stuff and get the same data back. Yeah, yeah. That is bad. Now, my no, oh, the, I, if I don't hold the if I don't hold it like this, it goes out. That's why I'm trying to like look like I'm singing a rock song. How about this? This will... Okay, that's awesome. <laughs> I can't wait to see this video. <laughs> Woohoo! Ah! So, um, so the point the point of this, you know, a lot of this is that fundamentally it's all it's all in the same domain just by definition. So, <laughs> oh no, I didn't. I don't want to see that. Jesus. Um, so. You know, there's nothing you can really do about it. The cookie is, you know, associated with api.msappspace.com. You know, by definition, you can you can call anything that these other apps are doing. So if they're doing like secret shit, I mean, it just doesn't work. You know, uh, so yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, we're accessing that cookie. We can steal any other functions the apps do. They're all in this giant, you know, sort of, uh, you know, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome land of apps beating the crap out of each other. I'll take the one that the, it actually works now. Hey, wow, cool. <laughs> So here's an example. We have now we three have, now. now we have mics. Cool. So here is a function call uh, called make request, and this is an open social thing, and it's using gadgets, and it's basically an example of how to construct a get request uh, using the API. Um, it defaults to a get if you don't specify a post, and here's an example of a post. Um, one a couple things to note here is the different params you can add to it. So you can construct it to look like anything you want to. You can add headers and do all those other funky things. Well, and the, the other thing to point out, because there's like the whole, like all the cool kids, it's like Ruby on fails versus Python, blah, 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 kind of thing, is that you know, some people are in the REST, you know, mindset versus Ajax. And so they built everything to take gets or posts. So, you know, if you're C-serving and you have some way to get there, there's, you pretty much can figure out any method you can construct the request is going to get there, unless somebody specifically enforces the method, right? Yes. It, well, with, yeah. So here's some, some more on uh, open social. Like, we already talked about that. More um, on? The reference, more yeah, on more social. on open social. No, I did not say that. That may have came out of my mouth. Uh, now, there's some reference for it. Um, now, what happens when you do these gets or posts, it sends it to something called relay.proxy. And that relay.proxy goes and grabs whatever information that you requested. Uh, the funny thing about that is you don't even need to be a developer to send anything to relay.proxy. So, I mean, did you just now have your own MySpace anonymous proxy? Um, as you can see here, um, just sending it to hexec or sending it to whatismyip.com, um, that IP address is the IP address of the server on the MySpace network. MySpace so. as open proxy. So we thought that was pretty cool. 
So let's talk about some apps capabilities. And, and this is really something, if you put it on a social net, if you put it on that social net, it's available to a developer. So they can query anything, and, and a lot of these social nets will actually go beyond that and extend it. So, so MySpace has My Open Space, which allows you to do some extra things even on top of open social. So pretty much everything, you're, you're making the developer and that application a friend. So anything a friend could do on your page or look at, that app can do, and a little with a little bit deeper, actually. Yeah, but. And kind of by definition, if you gave it to the app, odds are the way that... Uh, Literally, like 90% of these work, unless they do something really, really simple, is that they're running a web server somewhere, and they're sucking down whatever data you have via the app and then sending it to another site. You know? Well, that's an, another thing, too, is this, has app, this data has persistence. So if you submit data to one of these apps, and then you remove the app, uh, and then add the app back again, your data is still there. So anything you provided to an application, it's probably storing and storing off-site. Send naked pictures of your wife via PGP to email yeah. <laughs> rather than a social net. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So there's a couple different... <laughs> we've been doing that all day. Um, there's a couple different things uh, to note here. Um, you can either do it kind of two different ways. Either you can use the API and write code, or you can just pipe in an iframe. Um, and that becomes important later. So let's talk about a little social net app jujitsu. Um, att attacking social net applications is very trivial. I bet you nobody ever would have thought that that could be true. A lot of these apps are. Hey, wait, actually, real quick, is Harmony Guy here? No. If you are, like, and don't you don't have to raise your hand, but like, we want to buy you beers. Um, so there's a there's a, a person, and, and actually via social nets, I kind of have an idea who they might be, um, who has done a, a lot of stuff looking at social nets. And it's, he's really cool because if you read his blog, he's like, I can't believe that worked. <laughs> um, you know, it, he's, he's like a, a student, and he has Opera. And Opera has like kind of a built-in little tamper thingy. And so he's like installs an app. He's like, let me change that. What happens? And he's responsible for like the first, you know, open social, uh, you know, app that he was able to, to compromise, you know. And it was, it was 45 minutes after lunch, you know. <laughs> And and his his whole deal, he's like, I can't believe this works, you know. So these apps are actually delivered in one of three places for the most part, and that's they they have this app called or they have this part of the app called the canvas. And a lot of a lot of times, if it's a game or something you're playing, all that will come on the canvas. And it of course allows developers to put ads and stuff in there on the canvas. You also have the profile, which is your profile view, and then your home view. Um, you can you can have a contained app that grabs external content. And it's also coded by people who shouldn't be writing code. And uh, let's take a look at a few examples. Uh, what I did when I went through just to, as I thought that we needed some own social network apps for our presentation. And I'm like, Does, what, kinda, what here is went, like. He kind of went on a rampage for a weekend. It, yeah, was, it was really <laughs> kind of terrifying. So kind of sad at the same time. Well, yeah, it shows how I spend my weekends. Um, but I looked for anything that said allow secret communication or covert communication, communicate secretly with your friends. Uh, I saw this thing called the Keep It Real Box, and it's written by Mar, the first hood social app developer. And I'm like, wow, that's great. And if you notice, P. Diddy is a friend of this application. Yeah, and it's a horrible uh, picture of him. Usher and Tila Tequila. And so Tila Tequila. Keep it real. Uh, um, this is the developer's inbox of secret messages. Uh, that took 30 seconds. Yeah, 30 seconds, as long as it took to open an interception proxy and change a param. And there's like, there's no validation of it. And th another funny thing about that is if that was your information and you're making the assumption that you're communicating securely, you're wrong. I, I actually just noticed that the first message in there is, I think you sexy Yeah, now. I think you sexy, and then, oh, well, I'm sorry. Oh, thanks. I think something. Oh, I'm sorry again. This guy's sorry a lot. Sorry. Portland Avenue, that's in. Okay, here's another app. It's a Kama Sutra poll. Imagine what kind of questions they ask here. Um, and yes, reverse cowgirl is on the list of sexual positions. And actually, I said Nathan, earlier I said Nathan's number one was reverse cowgirl, but it, it is it, actually spread, spread eagle. eagle. Spread the eagle was the was the answer to the favorite position. And then and there's 54,000 people I, I just noticed yeah. that have used this app. 54,000 people that use this app. And first of all, this is dangerous anyway because it shows you people who match your responses. <laughs> this is really much better as an adult friend finder app. Now yeah. That I think about it. And actually, I just noticed, too, that 1% of all people are like you. And I would yeah, say one, that's a true statement. Yeah, 1%. Um, 
So this kind of highlights a problem with social nets. Like a, a lot of people complain about social networking as being bad for privacy. Well, if you think it's bad for privacy, just answering the questions, add a few of these applications. They're really bad. Oh, by the way, these aren't my results. These are somebody else's results, by the way. Um, now, let's take a look at an application that's uh, pro quote unquote properly done in open social. So this is a self-contained uh, open social app that you know just sends requests back to a server. So it's it's utilizing signed requests, right? Auth type equals signed. Um, Actually, we, we don't really know what that does. We don't think it does anything. <laughs> it doesn't. Apparently, it doesn't do anything. Um, so if you if you look at what this ended up on this person's page, uh, I injected a picture of my face on there, and I said, "Most recently kissed by Haxer." So, um, and here's the request, which is kind of funny. If you notice, if you can read it, it says off type equals signed. And then, of course, you have the from user ID to user ID, nothing earth shattering or anything. And then, of course, the link to the image, which I couldn't resist putting my face in there. So, no, uh, no discussion on this would be complete without talking a little bit about Kaha. Kaha is uh, an open social Google slash MySpace kind of uh, JavaScript, JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript on the short bus. Yes. It's made to take your bad JavaScript, run it through Kaha, and then make safe JavaScript. We didn't l really look at trying to, to, to test this because we didn't have to follow it. So um, it's completely opt-in. So it's like, use cold code. No, I don't think I will, you know. Yeah, it, it, that was kind of the deal. It didn't make any sense because, you know, if we were going to write a bad app, well, okay, we just won't use Kaha. Okay. Yeah. Won't, won't use your security features. So let's look at a few. Um, this app is called Dosser, and uh, it's under dating and relationships. And it says a general kick to the nuts. And that is a guy kicking an old man in the nuts really hard. We'll send you the phone. <laughs> Which is basically what this app does when you install it, because it logs you out after seven seconds and everybody that views your profile out after seven seconds. Yeah, and it, like the NRC, and Nathan points this out, it, it shows up on on your home, your profile, you know, everywhere else, and it creates the canvas and does that. And and you know, this, these are just again, these are just silly proof of concept type things that we could do. But we obviously we could we can load it. I mean, if if we're able to use Relay Proxy and put any content we want, I mean, we don't need it again. Like we don't need XSS. We'll just give you an ActiveX control to download, you know, or bad, you know, Flash or whatever whatever we want to do. This app is called Sea Surfer, and I don't think I need to explain what that does. But it demonstrates three different ways to do Sea Surf on MySpace: image tags, iframes, and meta tags. Oh my! And then, of course, also demonstrates content on the Canvas profile and the home. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Hey, we made it. Hey, wow! We Crazy. made it with three minutes to go. Wow! So here's some of our recommendations. Um, and this is usually where people start to get up and leave. It's like we don't care how to fix this stuff. We just wanted to see what was bad. Um, kill external content. Obviously, uh, you can't control what goes off of your site. Um, it's just not possible. Um, you know, some of the other stuff is uh, reduce API functionality. A lot of these APIs allow you to do so many crazy things that you'd never even imagine. And the reason that is is because they want to make it as available to every social as possible. So if you just created something that was specific to MySpace, you know, that might not hit high five or LinkedIn. Well, so, and actually something about like a lot of this stuff that we, we talked about earlier is, uh, is that, you know, because it's all user-generated content, um, you know, really your whole goal is to get people to come to your site and move in, right? And so if you do anything to restrict them or make it kind of tricky, they'll just go somewhere else. And so it's very much about just giving them as much functionality as they, as they possibly can have. And that's, that's why they end up with a lot of fail. Um, on the external content, one of the things that I've kind of said for a while is I think a couple social net sites will like partner with Photobucket and a couple like other uh, image sites and like only let you link to content there. I think that's a good idea. It sounds pretty reasonable. Yeah, and if you have security models, don't make them opt in because opt in always equals fail. Yeah. You know, even like I mean, I use NoScript when I browse the internets. Um, and I would say that probably a lot of people here do, but not a lot of people out there in the real world do. So this is a very small. I, it know. just occurred to me. I wonder if we say douchebag or fail more. Like which one? We need like a I running don't know. tally. We need actually. a douchebag and, and fail counter. Okay. Uh, yeah, and like I said, like kind of threat. That's model. a new social network app coming <laughs> soon. Douchebag fail, fa fail counter. So yeah, and like I said, like kind of threat modeling. I mean, um, there's a very large Silicon Valley information security firm that did just just did a very expensive review of MySpace, 
And we're kind of baffled that they didn't find any of these things because we just kind of got drunk and looked at shit. You know, it was forty. That that first sea surf was forty five minutes into deciding yeah. that we felt like doing it. So we had to like boot up, and then we had to get on Sean's wireless network, which was almost impossible, um, even for having to do even it normally. For me. Yes, um, and yeah, it kind of props to late adopters. People take their time. We've got one minute. People take their time. You know, adding some of this. The people who are jumping on first are, are the ones that are looking really bad. So um, a couple sites haven't, even though they're members of the Open Social Standard, they haven't jumped onto it yet. I think that's a smart thing to do. Um, yeah, developers, 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 or lack thereof. Um, uh, the profile lifetime bit, members since, that would like let you know. All right. Well, anyway, if you want to talk to us, we'll be around. Please come by, ask questions. 106. Room 106. 106, thank you. Thanks.